Hello. I'm just making a birthday card for one of my friends. Do you like making your very own card? It's fun. You just need scissors and glue and markers and colored paper. Tell you what, I'll show you how to make one in just a minute, okay? For these kind of cards, you really only need to have colored paper and scissors. And the first thing to do is choose a color of paper. Now, I think I'll use light pink and purple. Do you think they'll look okay together? I think so. So make a nice fold going this way. Rub your fingers good on the fold. And then make a good, nice, tight fold going this way. Again, rub your fingers. Now, this one's a little bit harder because you have to line up this long side with the shorter side and make it into a V shape. See how that's the shape of a V? And then if you have scissors that are nice and sharp, do it again. Because the more folds you have, the more designs you'll be able to get in the end. Okay, and then you start cutting. And you can make little triangle cuts, and you can make little curvy cuts. And over on this side, you could make a bunch of little zigzaggy kind of cuts. Really, you can make any kind of cuts that you want because it'll, anything that you make will end up having a really pretty design in the end once you open it up like those other ones. And remember, when you're making cards, you don't just have to wait until someone's birthday or something. You can make a card for somebody any time you want. It can be just a card to tell them that you love them and that you're your, they're your good friend. Or it can be a thank you card. Or I think I'll make this one a get well card. And it'll be for my friend, Grandma J. She hasn't been feeling very well. There. And then when you have your design made, you open it up. Isn't that pretty? All the little designs. And just brush your paper aside. And then it's time to glue it down to your, to your other color. It's nice to use two different colors so they can contrast. And I like using a glue stick because it's less messy. And it's a little bit easier to use than some of the other kinds of glue. But you can use whatever kind of glue you have, or even scotch tape will work if you don't have glue. Remember, the idea is that it's just fun to make it and give it to people, because then you make other people happy. And then we'll turn it over. And we'll flatten it down, center it on the paper, and then flatten it down. Isn't that nice? And then fold it over like this real carefully and then make a nice firm crease and then it's nice to write a message on the inside of it and you know I think that I'd like to write her favorite Bible verse into this one and one of her favorite Bible verses is in 1st Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18 and it says in everything give thanks because that's God's will for you in everything give Thanks, because that's God's will. It's important to give thanks. It's important to have a happy attitude. Did you know that by having a happy, cheerful attitude, you make other people happy? Did you know that when you have Jesus' love in your heart, it can't help but shine right out on your face? Jesus is the joy within me. Jesus is the joy on my face. Jesus is the joy in my song. I'll sing it to the whole human race. Jesus is the joy within me. In the morning, right from the start. Making other people happy. Because of God is love in my heart. Hey, there's my bell basket. I better go see what's there. Oh, 
Oh, it's Mailman Kenny. Okay, can you come up so I can sign it? Great. He's coming up with an express mail for me. I'm glad you'll get to meet him because he's become good friends with me and all the people on our street. Come on in, Mailman Kenny. Morning, Janice. I've got this express mail you've been looking for. Oh, great. I need you to sign for it, please. Okay. I'd like you to meet my friends. Good morning. Do you have time to visit us for a minute? Well, maybe a couple minutes. I'm running just a little bit ahead. Okay. Here's your pen, so I won't forget to give right, it back thank to you. you. Tell me something, Mailman Kenny. Every day I see you carrying these elastic bands. Do you collect elastic bands or something? <laughs> no, not hardly. These I keep around my mail to kind of hold it together. Oh. You know, and that keeps it organized. And in case of something I might fall, well, this is kind of keeps it from going in all four different directions. Oh. Have you ever fallen down when you've been delivering our mail? Oh, yes. Yes, many times. Just to deliver our mail. Can you imagine that? Tell me something. Every day I'm watching you go down the street with the mail. Do you think people like getting mail? Well, sometimes around check day, yes. But, you know, when they're looking for a check. But when I'm bringing bills, they don't like to see me sometimes. Don't want to get bills. What about letters from friends? Do they like oh, that? Oh, yes, yeah. Like this Everybody one? likes them, yeah. Yeah, I think this is what this is, so I'm happy to get it. Right. Do you think any of the kids watching are too young to, to send a letter through the mail? Can anyone do it? Anyone can. Sometimes they have the uh, groups come through the post office and they take them through and show them how to address a letter mm -hmm. and how to put a stamp on it. And even sometimes they'll put their name and address on there and mail it to themselves. Mail a letter to themselves. Right. That would be kind of get fun. Get it the next day. That would be really fun. Right. So the important thing is just to get the address put in the right place and the stamp up in the right place right. too. Right, right. Well, that's great. What's your favorite part of being a mailman? Well, I think most of the time being the friends of the people you're delivering mail to, you kind of get to be part of their family. Mm. How long have you been doing it? Almost 29 years. 29 years. So I bet you've made some good friends over the years. Right, definitely. Wow, right. that's great. Well, I, you must have to hurry on. Yeah, me. I'm going to have to go. Well, thanks for stopping by. I'm, I'm sure that there might be some kids out there that want to be a mailman or a mail lady when they grow up, and maybe you've been an inspiration to them. Be a good job for them. Really well, will. great. Well, thanks for stopping by. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day, and thanks for my mail. You too. Okay, bye-bye. Oh, I wonder what this will be. Oh, it is a letter from my friend. Listen, I'm going to open this, and then when we come back, we're going to go meet another friend of mine who's really had to learn a lot about being thankful and everything. So meet you there. Hey kids, if you love all the fun things you get to do with Janice and her friends, you'll flip over this. It's Janice's activity book. Loaded with fun, this book teaches scripture through mazes, puzzles, dot-to-dot -dot games, coloring, and more. And the best part is, it's free! Let's take a look inside. The scripture on this page says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, let's circle the pictures that are the same. That's right, you've got the idea. There are many more fun-filled activities in this book just waiting for you. By the way, did I mention, it's free! To get your very own copy, have your mom or dad write to Janice's Attic Activity Book, Care of 3ABN, P.O. Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896, or call 1-800-752-3226. Don't wait. Order yours today. I'm glad you made it here with us. I'd like you to meet my friend Melissa. Hello. And my friend Thad. Hi. You know, we saw you working on the computer, Thad, and that was real interesting. You can type pretty fast. Is it hard? It's not hard, no. You know, Thad, you showed us some paintings that you had done, and I'd like to be able to show them to our viewers. Would you like to see them? They're real nice. This one, I think, is really pretty. I really like the way the fence shows and the, the blue and the bird in it. Would you like to look at it, Melissa? 
And then there's this one, the little clown. I really like that one. When did you, how old were you when you learned to paint? That was probably a long time ago. I was probably nine, nine. or something like that. Yeah. And how old are you now? I'm 14. 14, wow. So I understand you're a Christian, right? Yeah, I am. How do you think that's helped you with, with being a quadriplegic? Well, I think um, reading Bible verses and praying encourages me a lot and helps me get along in everyday life. Mm -hmm. And if you had some advice to give Melissa and to give me and our television friends, what might be the advice that you would give us? Um, probably to do your best and um, pray and um, ask God to help you and he'll do it. Yeah, I think you're right. What other kinds of things do you like to do? Well, I like sports a lot. I like to watch sports. And do you do you like to go out and be with your friends at school doing that? Yeah. Do you mostly watch them, or how does that work? Yeah, uh, I watch them. Well, do you ever play sports yourself, Dad? Yeah, I can use a mouth stick, that, like I used on the computer, and uh -huh. I can use a Nerf ball or a ball like that and, and shoot at a ba basket. And you can actually get it in the basket, hey? Yeah, sometimes I guess. Sometimes. I bet yeah. you do it pretty often. I think it'd be fun to watch you do that. Would you mind showing it to Melissa and sure. I and it's my fine. television friends? Okay. Well, I think that'd be fun. Do you want to come outside and watch him too? Let's go. Well, here we are. I'm wondering how you're going to do this, Thad. I'm glad Allison's here to help with, with this. Are you ready to help, Allison? Well, let's see what Thad does. Can you give him his mouthpiece? Wow. That was super. Well, this has been lots of fun, and we really enjoyed meeting you, Thad. And now, if you guys come with me, we're going to go see a doctor in his office. Let's go. You slip your hand through there, Becky, and your thumb through the hole. That's good. Hello, Dr. Lowe. Hello. I'd like you to meet my friends. Hi. I see you're putting something on Becky's arm. Now, she doesn't really have a broken arm, does she? No, that's correct. You're just putting, what are you doing to her arm? Well, we're putting a cast on her arm, and uh, before we do that, we put some soft padding inside so that the cast will feel comfortable. Oh. The cast is very hard on mm -hmm. the outside to hold the bones right. straight so that they'll heal nice and straight, and to keep the bones from moving so that she won't have any pain. And so this soft stuff on the inside is to make her comfortable. That's right. Even though the outside is hard. Right. Well, what are you doing now, Dr. Lowe? Well, we're getting ready to put on the outer shell. Mm -hmm. And it's a soft kind of wet roll right now. It does. It looks you've dipped it in water, I see. What's it called that you're using? This is some fiberglass material. Oh. Well, how does it feel, Becky? Fine. It's Fine. going to get a little bit warm inside, Becky. Oh. As it dries. And will this dry up and get hard? This will dry up and get hard. I need to move your arm back. Look at that. It's perfect. And then when it gets hard, that's what holds the bones in place, that's right? That's what holds the bones together. Nice and straight. Mm -hmm. Well, Becky, even though this is a nice, hard, waterproof type of covering, you're going to need to try to keep it from getting wet, OK? Because the inside of this cast is still soft and can get wet quite a bit. And it'll get really sticky and uncomfortable in there if it gets wet. Now we're going to need to let this dry a little bit more. So you just hold your arm still like that while we let that harden up some more. OK? okay. Well, thank you, Dr. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, you know, sometimes 
kids are frightened to come to a doctor's office and they might think that getting a cast would be scary. And I'm wondering, Becky, can you tell the kids what it was like to get the cast on? Was it scary for you? Mm. Not even a, not at all? No. Did it hurt? No. No. Well, that's good news to hear, isn't it, that it doesn't hurt. What did the doctor say you couldn't do when you have this cast on? Go swimming. Go swimming. Boy, we all like swimming, don't we? That'll be sad to miss out on swimming, won't it, Becky? But you know what I think will be fun for Becky is she can practice being cheerful. Even though she has a cast on, she can be cheerful and try and have a happy attitude about it. I think I'd like to sign my name on her cast. Would you like to watch? May I do it, Becky? Can I sign my name? First signature on your cast? Yeah. Okay, here goes. J. Oh, I'm making it so big, aren't I? J-A-N-I-C-E. There's my name. There, all done. Well, it's time to get your cast off now, Becky. Well, how are you going to do that, Dr. Lowe? Well, we're going to use a machine called a cast cutter. Ooh. And it looks rather scary, and it sounds very scary, but it's very safe. Oh, good. There you go. Becky, we're just about ready to finish cutting the soft inside. We can let you out and be free. Mm. You've been a really good patient and holding nice and still, even though it was so scary sounding. Well, thank you, Dr. Lowe. Becky and I have both really learned a lot, and I know that my friends at home have, too. Thank you. You're welcome. Whoops. 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 That's better. Did you know that one of the best ways to become a good friend of Jesus is by spending personal time with Him every day? Well, adults do that by praying and by reading their Bibles. But if you can't read, it's kind of hard, isn't it? Or maybe you just like listening to tapes. Well, here's a fun way to have your very own devotions every morning when you get up. Janice has made these morning time devotions for her kids and for you, complete with songs, prayers, and stories. For more information, have your parents write to Morning Time Ministries, Box 208A, Kitwanga, that's K-I-T-W-A-N-G-A, British Columbia, V0J2A0, or call 1-800-263-7671. Here's the number again, 1-800-263-7671. You know, I was just sitting here looking at this card that I got today. It says, have a happy day. Sure brighten my day to get that card. Jesus likes it when we do things to brighten one another's day. We've had a busy day, haven't we? Going to see my friend Dr. Lowe and my friend Thad and learning all that we've learned about how we want to be thankful and contented in everything that happens to us. You know, I have a story about that. And I was just thinking, this is such a cozy evening up here in the attic. Would you like to get a pillow and just sit down and listen to the story? I'd like it if you would. Are you ready? Let's see. <clears throat> it was recess at the little village school, and all the pupils were outside in the bright sunshine playing. That is, except Mary Gray. Mary was sitting at her desk carefully, working on a difficult math problem. After a while, Miss Martin kindly said, Mary, you weren't here yesterday. Were you sick? I wasn't sick, said Mary, but I stayed home and Sister Nellie came to school. Well, said Miss Martin, I didn't know Nellie Gray was your sister. Yesterday was her first day here, but why didn't you come? Mary looked sad and almost embarrassed as she said, It wasn't because I didn't want to, but you see, Mother can't spare both of us conveniently. And so we're taking turns coming to school. I see, said Miss Martin, as she patted Mary on the shoulder. Well, you better run outside, Mary, and get some fresh air. You've studied so hard today. Oh, said Mary, I think I'll stay inside and watch the others from the window. 
I might tear my dress if I go outside. It was then that Miss Martin realized that Mary had worn the same dress every day for two weeks. It was just a simple cotton one. It wasn't fancy or expensive, but it was carefully made. What a thoughtful little girl, she said to herself. She doesn't want to make any trouble for her mother, and that's why she's being so careful with her dress. I wish there were more contented children like her. The next morning, Mary was absent, but sure enough, her sister Nellie sat in her desk. And Nellie stayed indoors during recess, just like Mary did. When Miss Martin gently suggested to Nellie that some fresh air would be good for her, she received the same answer that Mary had given. I might tear my dress. That made Miss Martin look at Nellie's dress, and right away she saw that it looked just like Mary's dress. It had the same pretty pink flowers on it. But she noticed that Nellie's dress didn't fit as well as Mary's. Why, Nellie's was too long. Suddenly, it occurred to her that maybe it was the very same dress. Imagine that, she thought to herself. They're so poor that they have to share a dress, and yet I've never heard either of them complain. They always act so contented and thankful just to be able to come to school. In those days, school teachers didn't get paid very much and Miss Martin really needed a new pair of gloves. But as she thought about those two girls sharing one dress, she decided to try to mend her old gloves and buy some material for another dress for the girls. She hurried to the only store in the village and bought some cotton exactly like their shared dress. Then she asked the storekeeper to deliver it to their home without telling them who it was from. Friday morning, Mary bounced into school a little early. She placed her books in her desk and then hurried up to Miss Martin's desk and excitedly whispered in her ear, Next week, Nellie's coming to school with me, and I'm so glad. Well, that's good news, replied the teacher kindly. Something happened that Mother didn't expect, and now we're all so glad that we both can come, said Mary. She hesitated for a minute. But then she was so happy that she decided to tell the teacher this little story. Their mother was a very poor, sickly winter widow, and all winter they had to stay out of school because they had no suitable clothes to wear. But they had saved their pennies from doing chores for the neighbors, and they were hoping to buy each of them a new dress in the spring so they could come to school. Finally, they earned enough money to get a dress for Mary, and then when they had nearly earned enough money to get a dress for Nellie, she got sick. And the money that was meant for Nellie's dress had to be used to buy medicine. Oh, said Mary, I felt so bad that I told Mother I wouldn't even go to school unless Nellie could come too. But Mother said that I had to because then I could teach Nellie what I learned and that would be better than neither of us going to school. Finally, after two weeks, I thought of a way that we both could go. I told Mother that I would come one day, and the next day I'd lend my dress to Nellie, and then she could come. So this week we took turns coming, and we're both so happy. But do you know what happened? And at this, Mary's little face just glowed as she continued. Last night, the storekeeper dropped off a package of material at our house. And now Mother can make a dress for Nellie, and we're all so happy. If only I knew who it was that sent the material. I'd thank them for it, but I don't. And so I've done all I can. We got on our knees, and we thanked Jesus for it. And, oh, Miss Martin, we're all so glad now. The following Monday, little Nellie in the new pink dress entered the schoolroom with her sister Mary. Her face was beaming like sunshine, and she exclaimed, I'm coming to school every day, and oh, I'm so glad. The teacher was happy, too. And do you know, every day when she put on her mended gloves, she thought about the two little girls 
who cheerfully shared one dress. And then she felt thankful to be able to help Nellie and Mary both come to school in their simple cotton dresses. And you know, that's how Jesus wants us all to be, is happy and cheerful with everything that happens to us. And that's a fun way to be, because when we have Jesus' love inside our hearts, His love just shines out on our face. And I love seeing His love shine on your face. I better go now. Keep shining for Jesus. Bye-bye.